Sponsored by Battle Tribe. For awesome stickers, patches, t-shirts, art, and more, check out our Etsy store, Battle Tribe. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're going to do something different today. Today we are going to look at the X Plus model kit of the uh, 135th scale Tyrannosaurus Rex attack. Awesome, awesome model. Had no clue about it. Saw it on, up on the Big Bad Toy Store and I'm like, I definitely had to get this. So I opened it up. The component's beautiful and um, really nice. Had the wire for the um, fence diorama background. So pretty much this kit is a base um a little jurassic park logo ian malcolm running and a piece of the fence and the t-rex beautiful like you can see that there's like hardly any flash the head and um really easy to follow instructions and so i was a little nervous about painting the t-rex i wanted to get as movie quality as possible but so we'll get to that when we can but um really nice components all bagged up and i started to um you know, take everything out and check all the pieces, make sure everything's up to snuff. As I said before, really nice instruction manual, easy to uh, look plans on how to build it. start to unbag all the pieces and uh, start cleaning them. So I have a, a little model knife and a pair of snips. So I begin to go through all the different pieces and getting everything out, kind of figure out. So a lot of little pieces, so I'll try not to lose them, use like a nice clean surface. But um, once again, like hardly any flash or um, and mold lines on these. It was a beautiful kit, nice, like hard, soft, like right in the middle kind of um, plastic perfect for model kits but a lot of attention to detail they did a really awesome job all the pieces are really well thought out fit together well and clear and concise uh, instructions so i was very happy with it I tend to, when I build a model, I go piece by piece, lay out all the pieces left and right side so there's no confusion and um, I'm not losing anything and misplacing anything. So it's funny how when you're an adult, you uh, kind of your level of build matures. When you're a kid, you just slap everything together and slather glue over it and it's a disaster and you try to build that once. But just take your time, you know. So it wasn't, and actually, it wasn't a really expensive model. I think it was like $30, $35. All the parts laid out, I begin to glue the different parts together. So first up, we got the head together. Really awesome, man. Look at the sculpt detail. Really cool. Teeth. And then the torso is actually like two big pieces that you put together and everything kind of like locks into place on it. So this isn't a push and fit. You definitely need plastic glue, but really well thought out. All starting to come together. So I got the head attached to the torso, you know, going through the tail. I have to attach the feet and the arms. But once again, just look at the details. Really screen accurate. Really badass. Feet are several pieces. You put those together. Arms put in place. They're all tucked up underneath. Got the legs in, the feet, all ready to go. Can't forget Jeff Goldblum. He's all put together. He was like, I think like three pieces or four pieces looking really cool. So there you got the completed racks. Now I started using some epoxy green stuff from Games Workshop. Blue and yellow mixed together and then um, started filling it in. Then I got some plastic putty, putty from uh, Vallejo to help fill in some of the more gaps. So with a wet paintbrush, I kind of just smoothed it in. And get it in and try to cover up all the gaps. There wasn't too many gaps on it, but there there is some that have to be taken care of to get the full 
the full perfect look that you're going for. All right, now for priming. So instead of airbrushing, I'm just gonna rattle can it. I use the brown and the tan from uh, Army Painter, one of my favorite primers for miniatures, etc. So I hit the bottom with um, the tan, the bone color, got it up underneath, and then hit the top with the uh, brown. So now you can see, so just kind of uh, controlled it. Now I'm going in with lighter colors, a lighter tan, like a bone color, and um, just dry brushing some of the details on the bottom, getting up underneath the neck and stuff. So I started looking for good screen captures of um, the T-Rex in the first Jurassic Park to get the, the colors that I was looking for, but still a little nervous at this point, but hoping to hopefully pull it through. Still working that light color from the bottom, getting it into a little, just trying to hit the raised parts, leaving the, the shadow and the darker colors under there. I used more of a, like a yellowish sand too to get in there and get some different variations underneath the stomach, just make it look interesting and stuff. So I'm gonna go back in with the darker colors. So now I took um, like a dark brown, started just beating in there, dry brushing it, and a little black, trying to darken it up. So, you know, it's a night scene. So, you know, trying to transition to make it look what it really looked like. But there's tons of pictures on the internet. You just got to find them. So I just started layering in the dark brown on top. Constantly looking at the references so I don't get lost. I did inside the eye socket and uh, the bony ridges above its, its, above its eyes. So really cool going down the back. Adding some stripes in there. Just dark brown and black color, really, really hitting it. Now I take straight black. I started doing all the nails, the claws. Also, too, I'm going in and just painting some um, little scales here and there on the, on the side of the face and sides of the legs just to give it a little some detail you can see i'm just doing the um, toenails right here <coughs> now i'm going in with a fleshy color doing the the sides of the mouth Inside the inside the mouth and the tongue, just getting it in there. Now I'm going in with some like a bone white and doing the teeth, and then I'll do a skull white on top of that to give it like a highlight. Just getting in there, trying to be neat. Now for the eye, I started with a bright orange, and then going with a yellow from Games Workshop to uh, give it the highlight small tiny 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 brush going in there and um gonna do the yellow gentle gentle i was so happy to get when i could get around to doing the pupils i just did them exactly where they had to be constantly checking so i wouldn't have a cross-eyed t-rex if you look on the head so you see that yellow on over it just leaving a little bit of the orange exposed it gives it the highlight really cool so, you can have the coolest looking T-Rex ever, but if your eyes are jacked, they're not going to look good. So. All right, moment of truth. A little black. Here we go. Oh, I do it off camera. My bad. Definitely a tense moment. There we go. Perfect.
So the final reveal of the eyes, they came out exactly how I wanted them. And if you look straight on, they're friggin' right on the money. Very lucky. If you mess this part up, I would suggest just repainting it, you know, starting over again. So really happy how it came out. I was looking at screenshots. He's pretty close, maybe a little darker. And he should have been a little darker on top, but really happy, man. Really happy. Added those stripes, got the tan underneath. I did some a little bit of wash on the uh, brown wash on there and the details like around the um, part on the bony parts on the nose, but really happy. Also did a gray highlight on the toenails, just on the, the raised parts. So he's pretty much done. So now I have to turn my attention to doing uh, Malcolm in the, the base. Amazing work by X Plus. Just can't tell you enough how awesome that sculpt is. So this is him in his base. Now I'm going to add some gloss. Use some Ard, Co Ard uh, Coat Gloss from Games Workshop. You can use a gloss from all different types of model companies. But I'm just going to go and um, get inside the mouth. First I'm going to do the eyes. Give them that little gloss. Get a little shine in his eyes. I'm going to do the teeth and the tongue and around the mouth. So, just to give it that extra little bit of wetness, that detail. Let me get this eye, too. Added a little oil, oh yeah, by the way, added a, a white dot to the top right to give it that highlight. Really cool, man. Get those teeth. This scene, to me, is one of my favorite scenes in movie history. As a kid, seeing it in there, I think I was like 12. Just nothing came close to that i was in that scene really enjoyed it really taken for the ride that that t-rex breakout is definitely movie history for me so being able to make a little model of it ton of fun Time to prime the base. So I gave it a nice gray from Army Painter and I dusted it with some brown for the, the dirty, muddy street. So here I go. Got my little E Malcolm, which I painted. I'll get back to him later. So here we go. You know, I just want to add some texture. It was pretty muddy on that road. So we're going to add some texture to it. First, I'm going to give a little dry brush, so a lighter brown, just hitting it, hitting around it.
All right, now for Vallejo Thick Mud. This, I love this basing material. So it's like a paint and texture mixed up. I got some mud. I use it for miniatures and all different types of stuff. So I'm just going to start packing it in, getting it all over the base. Nice thick coat, bringing it up a little bit. It's a little bit of a dirt road next to the T-Rex paddock. paddock. So I'm just mushing it in there, trying not to get too much anywhere, but it's okay to come up a little bit. So that's a puddle, so I'm kind of leaving away from that. I'm trying not to fill it into where the T-Rex footprint is, but just smoothing it along. All right, now I'm just letting it dry. So you see all the mud, the T-Rex footprints on the back are fixed up, and then this one fern painted Okay, it now for painting Jeff Goldblum. So Jeff Goldblum, I, I painted him with a white where all the flesh tones were, and now I'm using a, a flesh wash from Games Workshop, and you just paint it over the white, and it goes right into all the recesses and gives you highlights and shadows and a, a natural flesh tone. I love how simple it is, so... This is an old discontinued paint. I think it was called Reichland Flesh. So only a little bit left. I'm going to miss it when it's gone. Hopefully I can pick up another bottle of it somewhere. So really easy. And they have different flesh tones for like darker skins and for different types of people. But this one works perfect. So I'm just adding that. And um, the Malcolm figure too. I added gray highlights to the top of his old his black leather garb and cool little figure.
Okay, it's dry now. It's gonna just test foot. Made sure I didn't get anything in the hole for Malcolm. So he's dry now, he's looking good. Now I'm gonna take a Athrax Earthshade from Games Workshop and just w give a nice wash to the hole for the whole uh, base. So I know you guys love my New York accent, so there you go, I'll say it again. Give it a nice wash. <laughs> This all coming along. Just tapping it in there, getting that color, giving it some variation, make it look real. Okay, so here it is, letting it, it's all wet, just letting it dry. Get the footprint. Now I'm going to take a um, peat, um, a weathering powder peat. I forget what company it's from. It's like a brown. I'm just going to, first time using it, pop the top. And I'm just going to start put, putting it in there, pushing it into there. So this base is all dry. Just getting it in there. I could do the whole thing, just random patterns in certain areas that make sense. So this is the final base, looks good, nice and muddy and wet from all the rain, got some dirt in there, looking good, and got some, got Jeff Goldblum looking good running. So 
all coming together. All right, for the Jurassic Park logo, it's all prime gray. I was going to color it in, but I ended up not. So what I did was I just took a, a wash and uh, soaked it in there. I think that I think that was good enough. I didn't want it to like take away too much from um, the rest of the diorama. So and I also left it so I can pop it on and off too. So it kind of looks cool with it. Kind of looks cool without it. So there you go. Just getting it in there. I think I no, let me see. Yep. Cap that. Don't want to spill that. So. I think I'm grabbing a paper towel. Yep. Just going in there and wiping the excess off it. Now look at that. Gives it that worn out faux finish look. Pretty cool. Starting to come together. Got the T-Rex. Got the base. Still got a bunch of details to do. I still got to do the fence. And um, I think I'm going to add some vegetation to the back. Looking real cool. Bases. The logo's all dry. Looks really good. Definitely digging it. Time for the wire on the fences. Now, this part was a pain in the ass. They're really finicky and... The wire is very thin. Got the base all ready to go. And I prime these a metal color, the fences. I'm gonna glue them into place. Glued the fence in place, ran the wires through, and just used some zap a gap. There's the logo again to try to get them. Yep, yeah, fits nicely right there. So just waiting for the fence to dry. So now I started ad adding vegetation. I had some adding some uh, plants, trees. What I'm doing is I'm just drilling holes. Get my trusty drill. Drilling holes in the back here, and just inserting some bushes so you can have that so i'm gonna like stack that whole back up with, with vegetation i'm enjoying it absolutely love how it's coming together it's almost done Just test fit in this t-rex so he also comes with a single base so you can put him separately from the diorama Looking bad ass. So, back just doing more vegetation, more holes. Zap a gap in them. And sticking them into the base. I should have made a piece behind it, but whatever. What I end up doing is taking mud and putting it back there to kind of like give it like, a, like the earth comes right up to it. The sky is a little bit of it. Instead of making it look like plants are just growing out of it. So, still looking cool. It gives another layer of texture back there. Digging all the vegetation, a lot a bunch of plants I had from Michaels. So it just gives a layer, another layer behind the diorama. So can't forget to uh, paint the lights. I'm going to give them a wash as well. So I got one piece there. So now I'm taking like a little, I'm just going in there with a little bit of uh, gloss, do some puddles and stuff. A little wash. So some rain streaks, a little makeup brush just to dab it, just giving it a texture. 
So I'm really happy how that came out. Looking good. The footprint's got some wet in it, some water, got some puddles. That's the foot the T-Rex goes in. So here we go, final. Really loving it. Bad ass. This is an amazing kit. So I'm really happy how it came out. So and there's the mud I added just to kind of camouflage the back of it a little bit. So really cool. A must for any games. Uh, Jurassic Park fan, definitely. So definitely pick this kit up. I got mine at BigBadToyStores.com. So here's some more um, views of all the angles. Really cool. Very impressed. And another job well done. Happy with it. Hope you enjoyed this build video. Like and subscribe. More content and stuff coming down the pipe soon.